All right. So now this will be the third, um, hopefully the third portion of this uh, Shemot, which is our 13th, the 13th Sabbath uh, readings and feedings. That's um, also known as Exodus, the beginning and initiation into the book of um, Exodus. And this is what we're covering now. And we went through a two-part or so introduction, you know, discussing some of the background, the important background of it. Now, on the board, um, the dry erase board, there's some notes. We'll probably change that soon. But there's some notes for this Shemot or Exodus. All right, the movement of Jaws of Yah's people. Now, let us um, introduce once again this particular book right here, um, just published, which is a collection of um, some selected uh, um, compilations from online um, concerning the second book of the Bible, known as Exodus from a uh, modern Judaic um, perspective. And now, we're introducing this because we utilize this in our teaching, because we find that um, it's, it's, it's very basic, but it's very academic, and from their discussions you know, about this, even from an Ethiopic or black Hebrew perspective, can be initiated. Now, this is Shemot, um, which means names. It's the second word, the first distinctive word of this portion, which is the 13th weekly Torah portion in the annual Hebraic or Judaic cycle of Torah reading. And it's the first in the book of Exodus. It constitutes Exodus chapter 1 and 1 to Exodus 6 and 1. Now, Hebrews, we are the black Hebrews, and uh, faithful Jews in the diaspora, they read it in the 13th Sabbath after the Simchat Torah, generally in late uh, December or January. And so this is, this is early, comes early now in um January, because we're in this particular cycle of the so-called Western calendar. So the 13 and the 13 is a little, like, uh, interesting um, uh, correspondence there that I think is noteworthy, and I noted that earlier. But now the summary of this portion, from which is to be read and, and studied if possible, um, from... Exodus chapter 1, verse 1, to Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, and much is contained in that portion. There is, there's, uh, I've, you know, I've studied this portion and taught on many aspects from here, and I can tell you right now, it's good to first just read over it, read through it, and get a basic summary of it, and then, um, as possible, try to, this is why we say the study Bible is good, because the study Bible breaks it down into certain paragraphicals. And those paragraphicals are almost like bite-sized portions that one can kind of go into and, and try to meditate, study, and get the fullness out of it. So when they put it all together, when you put it all together through, sometimes it might take, it might take a year just to get through the entire Torah. And we're now in maybe our third or so year of um, this sort of a discipline way of of, of, of of uh, reading and study and also teaching and sharing of this. And I and I, you know, not get bored or tired of it because you're always finding something and then you start to see these correspondences in the life that we're living, you understand, and the, the keys to overcoming in and through the scripture and the proper application. This is the key. This is why knowledge is important, firstly, but then wisdom and understanding. And the book of uh, Proverbs is another excellent book that I would say all disciples should study the book of Proverbs. And we have, excuse me, the book of Proverbs in a the, in the, in the parallel Bible version where there's the Amharic, the royal Amharic of Haile Selassie's Bible, of the Emperor's Bible in one column. 
and in the other column, the King James Version. So for those who would endeavor to um, um, improve their literacy, Amharic literacy, and even study certain things, it's, it's a good study. We, we hope to, you know, demonstrate how that book and how that form of study can be utilized, both in independent as well as um, um, community or congregational, you know, and gatherings of brothers and sisters, but also individually as well. Now, the summary of this book of, of Exodus um, has about seven major parts. Some might divide this in, in more portions, but it has like, you could say, seven major, um, seven main scenes. I like to consider it sometimes like, not like a movie, but in that way where you're seeing it more, you know, you're seeing it, um, we're using your, your imaging, your understand, to see it in spirit and in truth um, and various applications using that computer that the Almighty gave you. And, and a lot of our imagination, we don't utilize the way we should and we're being pre-programmed, you know, through a lot of this, a lot of this um, subliminal suggestions and other things out there and mind control to, to think, uh, think differently than um, the way we should as sons and daughters of the King of Kings and his Christ. So we have to, you know, keep that in mind. Um, so the summary of Exodus right here is um, the seven parts is one, the affliction in Egypt. There was an affliction. Just as I and I people, the once lost but now found black sheep, and many of us right now are going through various tribulations and afflictions. And, and those of you all who are experiencing these things, saying um, don't give up, you know, don't give up, you know, keep the faith. Walk in the faith, overcome, keep, keep, stay, stay, stay spiritual, stay grounded. You understand? And pray. You understand? And and really have faith. Uh, utilize the name of Jesus Christos when praying to the Father and asking Abba. You understand? For any petition, remember, it's, it's very, it's one of the keys, and, and His Majesty even teaches us this. You know, in His um gospel and his good news. He also teaches us the same. So it's very important for us to keep that in heart as well as in mind. Now, so the affliction in Egypt, and we're in a spiritual Egypt, so you can put that up there, spiritual Egypt. This is presently a spiritual Egypt, what we're experiencing and what we've been experiencing. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of signs if we would do this in the video form or if anyone want to, you know, cut and edit this. I mean, you can show a lot of signs of how this is spiritual Egypt we're in. So as we're in this book of Exodus, when we say it's a, it's an initiation, initiation into repatriation, initiation into redemption, to coming out of Babylon, it is that preparatory tool. Burhana Selassie, otherwise known as Bob Marley, he did the song Exodus. You understand? And, and that song is, a, is still a great inspiration to I and I. But when we connect that, that spirit, that inspiration with the true groundation of the scriptures, you understand? Um, then we'll get to overstand. Then we'll be begin to, then we can even begin to have good hope because then you get to see the full picture, the reality of what's going on. So the affliction in Egypt is the first part. Then baby Moses is the second. Thirdly is Moses and Median. This is now, um, there's some scenes in between as well, but there's the fourth part is the call of Moses, when Moses was called. The fifth is circumcision on the way. Um, the sixth is meeting the elders when he met with the elders. And the seventh is Moses before Pharaoh or Peron, before he was before Pharaoh, right? So we have these um, seven parts. So let's try to deal with the first portion of this. And what we're going to do, um, since we just actually um, are looking at the copy of this particular book right here, which is known as um, the Shemot, you understand? The second the Torah portion, the second Torah portion of the Hebrew book of, of Exodus right here, which has some of the um, 
modern uh, Jewish, um, modern day Jewish uh, um, editorials, but some of them are very interesting. Um, it says 70 descendants of Jacob. So this is the affliction in Egypt that it began off with 70 descendants of Yaakov. They came down to Egypt and the Israelites were fruitful and they filled the land. That's Exodus chapter 1 verses 1 to 7. Now Yosef or Joseph Iusif and all his generation died and a new Peron or Peron arose over Gibbet or Gibbet. The, the, the Kabata, you understand, or Koptos land, or Egypt, who did not know Yosef. He did not know Iusif. Exodus chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. He told his people that the Israelites had become too numerous and required shrewd dealing. Least they multiply and in a war join Egypt's enemies. Exodus chapter 1 verses 9 to 10. Now that's also very interesting. So each of these things we're saying, we can look at our history as so-called black people in America and, and in the West overall. And we can see that resonance that is another proof that we are the Beta Israel, the once lost but now found sheep of the house of Israel, or what we sometimes say black Israel. You understand? Just to make that distinction there. But it says, so the Egyptians set taskmasters over the Beta Israel to afflict them with burdens. And the Beta Israel built store cities for Peron or Pharaoh, Python or Piton, and Ramesses. But the more that the Egyptians afflicted them, the more they multiplied. Exodus chapter 1, verses 11 to 12. The Egyptians, or those, quote, Egyptians, embittered the Beit Israel's lives with hard service in brick and mortar in the field, Exodus chapter 1, verse 14. Now, that's just one portion right there, and, and that even in itself contains so many points of resonance, you know, so many points of resonance. For example, um, they went down to Egypt. Now, how, how would we interpret this? in our present experience and in our present history. How, uh, what's the resonance there? What's the going down to Egypt? Well, first of all, what is spiritual Egypt today? That's the first question. We have to first of all identify, um, we can look at it historically, and we have had to do a lot of reconstruction, Ethiopic reconstruction of ancient Egypt to really put things in the, in, in the more historical context as well as include African and black people in their proper historical context in the real story, you see. And once we were able to do that, then when the historical aspect becomes clear and one can say, yes, I can see this both on the historical as well as the mythological levels, because each culture told certain stories. And what the Bible does beautifully, but this confuses many people, is incorporates a lot of those elements into this story and people will say well they were taking from here and there but it was their story because they were in Egypt they were part of that civilization you cannot distinguish the Israelites and like even Yosef, Iusif, Joseph from the other black Egyptians you understand and that's very clear even to this very day we have um, real life like um, art basically that shows you the color that shows you the racial type you know, saying of the Egyptians you know, saying? but we also get to see when we look at a full picture we see other types that come into the Egyptian system now when we put all this reconstruct the timelines we find the approximate time for this particular historical event now sealing up that and why we say sealing up that because it's it's a aspect that I would like to go into right now and, and present all the, the presentations of that. And, that. and we've done that somewhat on different points of that already in previous videos that we've posted on this channel and elsewhere. However, what I think is more important, seeing the time that we're in and redeeming the time that we're in, is now to look at it in the prophetic sense, look at it in the spiritual sense, 
as this being a a kind of a template, you know, understand, for this present time of coming out of spiritual Egypt or out of overall Babylon. Because when we look in the so-called real world, you know, this world order, you understand, um, white supremacy, Gentile world domination order that's been dominating for the past, you could say, um, 400 plus, but maybe roughly 400 plus, uh, less than 1,000 or so years, you understand, but even longer under the, the Greco-Romantic and the, the Romano-Greek civilization, that would take us back about 2,000 years. Then we come to the Christological period, you understand, and now this is far older than that, but this is, is a template, there's keys to this that we can see even presently. For example, going down to Egypt, we see quintessentially D.C. as Egypt. And there's some documentaries that are out there. I think History Channel did some, maybe Discovery Channel as well. And maybe others also did something where they showed how Egypt, I mean, how D.C. was built with those, like, with the obelisk and with a certain a certain pattern, a certain formation that reflects the heavens, similar to how even on the water, just like um, ancient Egypt, those cities were built in connection with the water. And it showed in the sense that, that Egypt was a part of that, and even through the Masonic, the Freemasonic link, when you start to study the Freemasonic connection with D.C., and then Egypt's connection with their um, mythology or religion, the Freemasonic and, and luminous so-called religion. So you begin to see that Egyptian aspect, another aspect of Egypt, because Egypt was like, we, we say, America. Many people say around the world that they, they, they like Americans, they like American movies, but they hate American politics or stuff like that. So even they can look at America and distinguish the the people to some extent and 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 the entertainment and music and stuff like that and like that embrace that but not embrace America in the sense of its politics or its foreign policies so I want you to keep that in mind when we're looking at even ancient Egypt see a lot of folks when you look at ancient Egypt they don't look at it in the reality so if you look at America today people around the world, some people and peoples in certain places, they like um, the people of America and they would even like to be, quote, American, but they hate the politics. They don't like what America has done around the world from, from a political sort of view. So America can be seen in those distinct ways. So Egypt in ancient times also needs to be, under, it needs to be understood that Egypt was the same way. In fact, Egypt was quintessential in that aspect that um, you had these differences that on the surface of 